This episode of the Devoid Wrestling Podcast is brought to you by the Pink World Order. I figured since there was a pay-per-view Saturday, we had to at least get Micah on the podcast for, for predictions. This is what happens when Derek does like more than one thing a week for the podcast. He just feels like he runs it. I, hey, this episode isn't about you. You're just on here to give your, your peasant predictions and then move on. Peasant predictions? You have a cardboard plaque next to your name. This this is not cardboard. This is solid gold and snakeskin leather, buddy. Yeah. Anyway, enough of that. We need to keep this short so you don't ruin the episode. He's by being either on lying it. or he's not really a vegan anymore. So the first match that's going to be on the buy-in is Britt Baker. Hold on, I have to make our Google Doc. I already have my predictions. Oh, I know, I already know my predictions too, but I need to make the Google Doc so I can like rub it in your face when I win again. Because you're really bad at predictions. Yes, but I'm the one who actually <laughs> watches AEW. I watch AEW yeah, sometimes. But like, I watch the last hour of AEW every week when Big Brother's over. Congrats. Some guy came into my work with a Bullet Club shirt. And I was just like, I like your shirt. And he, he's like, oh, you know what it is? And I, I put up the two sweet. And he, I, it made my day. Would it be funny if he just went, no, not the NWO. It's the Bullet Club. <clears throat> anyway, so the first match is Dr. Britt Baker DMD, DMD yeah, of course. with Rebel versus Big Swole in a tooth and nail match. Get it? Because they're going to fight tooth and nail, but then also Britt Baker is a dentist. And also I'm pretty sure they're going to be in her dentist office. And, and Big Swole nails Cedric Alexander. Ha ha ha, funny. I think Dr. Britt Baker is going to win this match. Oh, I have down Swole AF. You really think Big Swole is going to win this match? It's it's like, yes, because like nobody wins their like the their gimmick matches. And like this is like, like in Britt Baker's thing, like this is in her doctor's office. Yeah, but like. But also, like, this is, like, the blow-off thing, and, like, the babyface needs to win. Like, Britt Baker does not need to win this match. No, but if this is the blow-off, Britt Baker is surely moving on to the title. It would make sense for her to win if she's moving on to the title. I mean, I guess. I think I think, I think, think it's very obvious Britt Baker's going to win this match. I think it, that's why Swole is going to win, because it's, like, too obvious. No, because there's some other points of the show where that can happen. Right, like there's and like, we'll, and really, we'll get to that later. There's like really obvious matches, right? Yeah, yeah. Speaking of a match that is a, to me not obvious, but I guess to a lot of people is obvious. Matt Hardy versus Sammy Guevara yeah. in a broken rules match. Yeah. Who do you have, Micah? Well. Completely going against my logic from earlier, I think Matt Hardy needs to win this match. I think Sammy's gonna win. I I think if there wasn't the stipulation of Matt Hardy like leaves if he loses, is that because I don't think this is the end of their rivalry. See, I think I think Hardy's retiring. No. I think this would be the perfect situation for Hardy to retire in a gimmick match where he could do the broken stuff best putting over a young talent. No, because it's not cinematic, so it doesn't... So no. You don't know that, though. It could be cinematic. It's not cinematic. They're only doing cinematic matches on the buy-in. Are you sure? Yeah. Did they say that? I mean, they didn't say that the Britt Baker one was a cinematic match, but it's also in her dentist's office, so... Yeah. And it's on the I buy-in. I think this match is going to be cinematic, and I think Matt Hardy is going to lose. Okay, I don't think they're going to do... Even WWE doesn't do two cinematic matches in a pay-per-view. Uh, what about WrestleMania? Oh, uh, that, that was actually two nights. Actually, what about Money in the Bank? That was technically two matches. Yes, but it was a simultaneous match. It wasn't two matches, it was one simultaneous match with two winners. 
Are you sure? Are you sure? Positive. Anyways. All right, now for an actual obvious match. Jurassic Express versus the Young Bucks. So you say it's obvious, but, like, there's a don't, lot of... Don't tell me that you have the Jurassic Express winning this oh, match. Oh, obviously I have Young Bucks winning the match. <laughs> oh, okay, good. But it's not that <laughs> I, obvious. I was gonna be like, hold on. Because, like, I thought last year at All Out, Kenny Omega was gonna be Pac. Because, like, obviously Kenny Omega sucks, but is a good res- good wrestler. Kenny Omega can only have good matches with Kazuchika Okada. Um, that's my impersonating me voice. But, um, yeah. It's gotta be the Young Bucks, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Up next, I have this is on the, the Wikipedia obvious, list. This oh. is the most obvious match. Like, win, right? Like, we both should have the same one. Dark Order versus the Natural Nightmares, Scorpio Sky, and Matt Cardona. Like, that yeah. should be the most The Dark obvious. Order versus the big allegiance of faces who are friends, because Cody? <laughs> I have... You know, you know, actually, honestly... It's Dark I'm, Order. It's, it's gotta I'm, be Dark Order. Dark Order. You don't have your champion lose. It, but what if you... But, like... There, there could be a lot of ways they, they go about this match, though. They could have Matt Cardona pin, like, Stu Grayson to set up, like, a title match between, between Matt Brody Cardona and, and Matt Stu Cardona. Grayson? No. It's got, it's the Dark Order. This is the most obvious one. You could have, like, Colt Cabana get pinned and start, and, like, re- remind people that Colt Cabana's not really part of the Dark Order. Maybe. But I agree with you. I think the Dark Order is going to win yeah, in the end. Is, but I think it's going to. I think it's going to set up something oh, shit. bigger with Matt Cardona. We didn't talk about the other pre-show match, the Casino Battle Royal. That's not on the pre-show. Yeah, it totally is. No, it's not. It's not. No, that's that's a that's up next on my on my list that I'm looking on Wikipedia. That's not a pre-show match. Okay. Well, it is. Darby Allen versus Lance Archer versus Brian Cage versus Ricky Starks versus Penta L Zero M. Stop! Stop! It's it's a it's all of the people in factions and Wait, Lance Archer. Can I just say? Because I just want to say Billy. Because I still think that's the funniest thing is that his name is just Billy. Yeah, they. That's that's like the thing. Like why it's like Cody and Brandy Rhodes. But yeah, like, it's like it's I, Billy I just think it's really funny. It's Billy and Austin Gunn. I think they should start introducing the best friends as Trent and Chuck Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think is gonna win? Oh God, this is the hardest one. Yeah, I think I could tell you who's not gonna win. Austin Gunn is oh, I, definitely not winning this match. I was gonna say Sean Spears. <laughs> He's like, oh, I think Sean Spears has a better chance than like a lot of people in this match. Yeah. So certainly not a better certainly not a, For our viewers and maybe for Derek, there are two predictions. There's the winner, but also there's the tw- yes. like number twenty one. Uh who see, I have a I have a good pick for who twenty one could be. Yeah. So my winner who I think is gonna win is Ray Phoenix. Really? Because, like, yeah, it's either going to be him or Pentagon, but I want to say Ray Phoenix because Ray Phoenix, like Nick Jackson, like, is one of the best athletes wrestling. Right. And so, like, that's, like, a different type of match for either, because MJF and John Moxley aren't that type of wrestling, and I think that what AEW does best is they really get, like, different styles of wrestling, mm-hmm. like, in the same match. I think... It's gonna be Ricky Starks. I, see, here's what I'm thinking about, too, is, is this has to tie in with who I think is winning the title match at the end of the night? Absolutely. So, I don't think... <sighs> this is, see, this is hard. I think... Oh. I'm going to lock this in. I'm almost certain it's wrong, but it's what's making the most sense in my head right now. I think it's going to be Darby. I think Darby 
for the scenario that's going on in my head, uh-huh. I think Darby's the best choice. But now we got the other prediction. Who do you think is uh, is TBD? I think it's the return to the indies slash like not WWE of one Chris Hero, formerly known oh. as formerly known as Cassius Ono. Oh, I want to change my answer for who I think is going to win because it's the same name as who I think is going to return. Okay. No, you uh, said locking it in. Absolutely not. No, no, no. Because because I'm thinking about this more, and I'm thinking about the partnership that AEW and NWA are starting to form. And I just realized that it would be so good if Eli Drake came out and won this match. You already said locking in Darby Allen. That's fair. But I'm going to say Eli Drake is the TBD. And if he's not going to win, he's going to get really close. Because Eli Drake is a great face yeah, 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 to yeah. push towards the world title. Scene. But I think like in front of fans, like Chris Hero... It's gonna be like a huge pop because like Chris. Oh Hero, yeah, absolutely. Chris Hero is amazing because he also won't be fucking wrestling in a onesie like Cassius <laughs> Ono did. What's wrong with basketball jerseys? It just looks weird on him. Yeah. Like I guess it's okay can, for like Mon- get- it's okay for like Montez Ford to like come out in one and then like take it off. I guess, yeah. but like not to wrestle in like basketball shorts. That's just like weird to me. Can I make one extraordinarily bold prediction slash guess that I'm almost certain isn't going to happen, but if it does, I win the predictions? No. No, but, no, no. Like, you can make I want to tell you how outlandish this is, and then you'll say yes. Okay. Number 21 is Brock Lesnar. <laughs> I could see it happening. That's, like, the thing. That's why I want to say no. Yeah, but, like, don't you want to see Brian Cage versus Brock Lesnar so badly? No, you know what I really want to see? I want to see Darby Allen versus Brock Lesnar more than anything. I want to see Tony Khan, like, stand up to Brock Lesnar and saying, like, I'm going to give you $50 and a hot dog for this show. <laughs> All right, let's go on to the next match. I just talked a little bit about the uh, the partnership. Up next, we have Hikaru Shida defending her title against NWA Women's World Champion Thunder Rosa. It's it's World's Champion cuz NWA. Ah yes. Um this is the match I thought you were talking about when you said the most obvious match result of the night. Oh no, cuz like Dark Order like ha- like cuz they have a champion on their side and like a- and like AEW like books their champions to win. But I I think Karashita is going to win this match. Absolutely, you're 100 percent correct. Yeah, <laughs> like there's not, like that's not even a prediction. That's that's a spoiler. <laughs> I don't even need to see that match to know how it's going to end. It's going to be like a running knee, and then like they're both going to like raise their hands as like champions of like women's sports. All right, the next match. Because mm-hmm. I have a huge prediction. That, like, has nothing to do with the show, but just overall. The next match is Kenny Omega and Adam Page versus FTR. Yes. Fear the Revolution. Fear the Revolution. Sean Spears' goons. Telly Blanchard's bitches. Yes. Who do you have, and why is it FTR? (laughs) See, I think it's Kenny and Hangman. Micah. No, but like, hear me out. It doesn't You're make... the one that watches AEW. I know. I know. <laughs> and it doesn't make sense for FTR to win them now. Why not? Because nobody beats the Elite in their first time in a championship match. Haven't you seen Cody? Nobody beats them. But FTR are so good. That's the point. Right, but Kenny Omega and Hangman Page are also so good. And I think, I think, obviously the Young Bucks are going to make an appearance in this match. And so I think that the Young Bucks, in their allegiance to Kenny Omega, but their disdain for Hangman Page, they're going to double super kick. They're going to like super kick party, whatever they call it, like the double super kick to Hangman. And it's like, oh my God, the Young Bucks just screwed them. But they're going to be like, Kenny Omega's my best friend. And then double super kick FTR. Well, of course, Rick Knox has been down for like 10 minutes. 
So what you're saying is this is going to end the same way JBL versus John Cena at Royal Rumble 2005, 2009 ended. Sure. <laughs> I think that can- No, I think it's FTR, 5,000%. There's 5, no way they're not winning the I can't titles wait for here. you to be wrong. All right. The next match is Chris Jericho versus Orange Cassidy in a Mimosa Mayhem match. Mimosa. Somebody doesn't drink. I have a really bold prediction for this match. Now, I want to say something first. Someone on Reddit did the math, and the mimosa that's going to be in the vat is like 85% champagne. (laughs) Anyways, I have a bold prediction. Orange Cassidy is going to win because he's going to kick out of the Judas effect. Right? That's such a bold prediction, but it could happen. I think he's going to win by kicking out of the Judas effect. Damn. I mean, I also think Orange is going to win, but, like, what? That's still less bizarre than Brock Lesnar is, like, the number 21. Is it? Yes. That's how you build a, that's how you build a megastar. You have him kick out of an unkickable move. Yes. All right. The last match of the show. Mm Mm-hmm. John Moxley versus MJF with Wardlow in a match where the paradigm shift is banned. So there are some there are some holds barred, by the way. Some holds are barred. Specifically the paradigm shift. Yeah, the, the paradigm shift. I just really want to say some holds barred. Yes. Uh, who do you have and why? God, this one is this one is the hardest one. In my opinion. I think I know what you're going to say, so I've already written it down. Like, it has to be Moxley, right? See, I knew that's what you were going to say, and so that's why I wrote it down. I 5,000% think MJF is winning the title here. Like, it, it should be MJF, but, like, here's my one thing. Moxley's, like, title reign, kind of like Hikaru Shida has been, like, completely, but, like, Moxley's title reign has been completely, like, within lockdown, basically. Like, he really hasn't had, like, a win, per se. Because, like, Brian Cage, the towel got thrown in. Brody Lee didn't even tap out. He passed out. Like, he hasn't, like, Jake Hager, that was, like, a street fight. Darby Allen, he's like 300 pounds lighter than John Moxley. Like, I feel like John Moxley hasn't had a win yet. And I feel like MJF, this being MJF's first loss, this being like the paradigm shift is banned. Like, there's so many, there's like the odds are stacked against him, like both in the real world and the kayfabe world. I think. This is how you, because like MJF is obviously going to be AEW World Champion eventually. I think he. I think it's the wrong time to put it on him. See, here's the thing. I thought that too. I was almost certain Moxley was going to retain the title until last night, when we saw all of a sudden. That side of MJF, I was like, "Oh, that fucker's gonna win the title." He, I don't, I don't think so. I think so. I think now. I think. I also disagree with you. I think Moxie's had a great title run. I think all of those wins, like, it's a great first title run for someone. Definitely not Moxie's last title run. Moxley, by the end of his career, will be like a multiple time AEW World Champion. I think as for like a first title run of the guy that's obviously going to be your top guy for the foreseeable future, I think it's it's similar to if you think about John Cena's first title run and sort of the matches he had. Mm-hmm. Like John Cena had like he had a good title run and then he got injured and had to lose the title, but like he had a good title run. Yeah, I just think that it's it's too soon to put the title on MJF. Like, he's, like, 23, 24. Like, See, I, I disagree, but I'll tell you this. 
I don't think MJF will hold the title for long. I also think that if if MJF wins, it's not clean, and I don't think that AEW wants a champion to win a championship like not clean. Because Brody Lee is a heel, but he like won. He destroyed Cody clean. Well, that's that's Brody Lee's character. Brody Lee's not like a heel that cheats. Right. But Brody I Lee's think a that, heel that murders their opponents. MJF think, is a heel that cheats. I don't think that MJF. Like I don't think that that's what they want their top title. I disagree. I think I I disagree. Okay. I think MJF is winning this match. I think it's also uh, been I like think... it's also been like one pay per view since like I think that John Moxley is going to hold the AEW Championship th- like through twenty twenty. I think. I could be wrong. I think. See. I think MJF is going to... I think winning the title is going to be what really starts the the mjf Wardlow rivalry that they've been teasing. See, I think this is why... I think this is what's going to, like, start it because he loses. And he, like, either, like, Wardlow punches him with the diamond ring or, like, Wardlow doesn't help out. Because, like, it's the paradigm shift is banned on MJF, but, like, Moxley's hitting the paradigm shift on Wardlow in this match. Like, or on Rick Knox. <laughs> no, it's not Rick Knox. This is a championship match. It's either Bryce or Aubrey. I can, like, almost, like, go th- go down the list and probably correctly predict the... Okay. Like, Mike Kyoto's got to make a reappearance. In yeah, this. yeah. Mike Kyoto's the 21st man. <laughs> We only have a couple of matches we agree on for the, for All Out. Yeah. It's interesting. It's going to be an interesting uh, an interesting loss for you. Hello. Hello. <laughs> this is what we were talking about before, you know, the real thing. This is the, the, the tier list that I was talking about earlier that James and I are doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you from the past sure does look stupid now. Man, me from the past sure doesn't fucking know how technology works. <laughs> yeah, so we're going we are going to do a tier list. It's going to be of WWE licensed video games. Yes. I am a big fan of WWE video games. I play a lot of them. He emulates a lot of them. He doesn't play any of them. Hey, I have my PS4 right there. I played WWE 2K17 the other day. So, and my screen is going to be shared now. Uh, so, uh, from the bottom up, we have never played, because some of these we've never played. Uh, the F tier, Global Force Wrestling. D tier, we have named Raw Underground. C tier, Main Event on Ion. Derek's very proud of that one. Yes, one of my favorite shows. Uh, B tier is uh, No Mercy 2016, a grand pay-per-view. Uh, A-tier, Mania 19, because WrestleMania wouldn't fit. And uh, All In as S-tier, because it's a pay-per-view that we're going to review very shortly. Yes. So, so there's, Derek, a, there's a lot of games on this list, aren't there? There sure are. So... The first game is a game I certainly have never heard of called Micro League Wrestling. I have also never heard of this game. <laughs> I, But from what I recall, I think it is like the first one that's ever been released. Yeah, it was released in 1987 for the Commodore 64. Um, a Japanese home computer game. Yeah system um and released and the atari st in 1989 there you can't choose your character you can only choose matches and what's to play in like hogan versus uh savage or hogan versus paul orendorf and then you would have to buy expansion discs if you wanted to play more which you could play as Randy Savage versus the Honky Tonk Man, uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan versus King Harley Grace, or 
Hogan versus Ted DiBiase and Jake the Snake Roberts versus Rick Rude. But you have to buy, like, is this the original DLC? I guess so. Wow. And since this is old, it's probably, like, freaking floppy disks, right? (laughs) Maybe. Putting that right there. The next... Oh, boy. WrestleMania Steel Cage Challenge. Now, this is a game that I unfortunately have played. (laughs) Uh, It's really boring. Because the yeah. only you only can play in a steel cage. Like, that's the thing. I think you can play normal. It's been a while. But, like, boy, is this the top of F tier? Yeah. It's it's in the series of, of like, NES-era games where they're kind of all not... They haven't made a good wrestling game yet, really. Like, it's it's bad. This next game is called WWF European Rampage. Uh, and it was again for the Commodore 64 and Atari ST and other. And this is another one of those pre CD ROM computer games. Yeah. I have never even heard of this game. I heard of it briefly because I watched Triple Jump's like ranking of all of the. WWE games, but it it also does not look good, but I've never played it, so I can't accurately judge it. Oh, I definitely know this game. WWF Royal Rumble, where the only game mode is a Royal Rumble or a singles match. It, how many how many people are in this game? Because I'm pretty sure it's much less than 30. 19? It could be 18, but 19 sounds more correct because WWE... That, I see, played this once and it, it was bad. Like it was like almost impossible to like move around. Yeah. This next game, King of the Ring. Again, you can play normal or King of the Ring. So, so I've never played this one. Neither have I. But I've okay. heard of it. <laughs> I've heard of it, yeah. Yeah. Um Rage Cage. Never I think that's Rage in the Cage. Rage in the Cage? Have you played that one? No, but again, I watched that video like two days ago, so. But I I don't know about it. What's that one? Boy, do I not know. But WrestleMania the arcade game, I'm just going to look at it. Have you played this one, Derek? No, have you? It's bad. (laughs) Man. (laughs) I'm yeah. starting to see a trend with all of these old WWE games. It's not, and this isn't like oh nostalgia because I'll put some like newer games in Global Force Wrestling. Don't oh, you worry. Oh, absolutely. But like most games from this era, with the exception of like Super Mario, because like it's the same game. Yeah. Like Mar, like Mario really hasn't changed, and like The Legend of Zelda on the NES. Like, I haven't played too many old, like, games for, like, three, four generations back that I've actually enjoyed playing. Yeah. Because even, like, NES is kind of where they started to figure out, oh, people will actually like this. Yeah. Oh, WWF in this house, in your house for the PlayStation. For the PlayStation. Now, obviously, this is before they started making the SmackDown games. Mm-hmm. Have you played this one, Derek? I have not. It's pretty bad. <laughs> I'm I'm shocked. I'm awestruck. I'm actually going to move. Global Royal Rumble is like one of the worst games I've ever played. <laughs> <laughs> All right, That's WWF Warzone. Now, I'm pretty sure this is the one with that has two different models. Uh, one of them is for like PlayStation and N64, and then the other one is for the Game Boy. And I have heard that the Game Boy one is trash, but I have played this one, and this game isn't bad. It's it's definitely if I were if it were up to me, it definitely go in Raw Underground because it's not like bad per se. Yeah, it's just old. Yeah, it's just it's not even that because some of. Uh, have you? Because this next game, WWF Attitude, is like kind of the same game, in my opinion. 
I've never played Attitude. It's kind of the same game. Yeah. It's kind of like how... Oh, is it no... It's either... I think it's No Mercy and, like, this ECW game are, like, the same game, but, like, No Mercy is better. Yeah. Um, this next one is, like, a WrestleMania... Arcade. Is that the NES one? I think so. That's a good game. That's like, that is for the, for what games were like at the time. That's like a good game. Mm-hmm. That was the first like big one. So, No Mercy twenty sixteen. I'd say main event on Ion Television. It's still an NES wrestling game. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Um, WrestleMania two thousand. Now this game. Snaps. I love this game. I think this should go in Mania 19. I... Like, it's at the low end of Mania 19, or the top of No Mercy 2016. I think it's in the top five best overall. I played this game so many times. I've put so much hours into just messing around with, like, the creator... Not the creator wrestler, but, like, the change the attires of the wrestler mode like, the original Superstar trends. And, like, the only thing that bogs this game down is after, like, the top 15 superstars, the roster's, like, complete trash. (laughs) I was being gracious putting it in this. I didn't think it was that good of a game. Really? Yeah. I love this game. I really think this this game is, like... This is for the 64, right? N64? Yeah. It's... It's the predecessor to a game we're going to get to in, like, minutes. five minutes or so. Yeah. Um, Another Royal Rumble game. This one I have not played. Yeah, I haven't played this one either. It looks like this one's for the Dreamcast. Oh, that makes sense. Uh, it's the first SmackDown game. I would say that it, this is... This goes top, top of uh, Ion or bottom No Mercy. Like this is a I, solid This game. is the only SmackDown game I haven't played. I'm gonna tentatively put it in No Mercy, but I like the bottom. Uh yeah. now No Mercy for the 64. Like we're There's no other place you can put it. Raw Underground. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just it really is. It's it's a top tier game. Inside and out. SmackDown 2, uh this is know your role, correct? Yes. Now, controversial. I think that this one is in A tier. Like, I, it's a good game. I just don't think it's like the god of games. It's, so, considering what game came after it, I want to put it higher because I know what the game that came after it. Yeah. I don't like it all. Well, the SmackDown and that came after it, not the, the SmackDown game that came after it. Yeah. Mm. But the SmackDown game that came after it, I don't like it at all. SmackDown 2, I think, is okay. You know? It's not in the best games. It's not in, like, the worst games. I think it's okay. So, B tier? Yeah, I'd say No Mercy 2016. Is it, is it above or below the original SmackDown? I say below. I wouldn't know. I, I would say below. I No. I want to say it's above. But I haven't played this one in so long. Yeah. Um, Betrayal? Never played this one. I've never played it either. All I know is that I'm pretty sure all of the Game Boy games suck. Oh. WrestleMania 8. We'll, we'll get to it, but one of them does. One of them sucks way less. Yeah. Um, SmackDown, just bring it. This game sucks. Is it going in Raw Underground or Global Force? Um, put it, put it in Global Force here. Just bring it sucks so much. Is it? It's bad. Like it's so bad. Is it unplayable? To me, it is. But like, like Royal Rumble is like legitimately unplayable. Like I'm trying to get like a full comprehensive list. Right. Like considering that that know your role came before this and shut your mouth came after this, I. I I would put it maybe top of Global Force Wrestling tier. Sorry, my computer was messing. Up. <laughs> Sorry, my computer died. <laughs> um, 
WWF Road to WrestleMania. What what's that one for? I want to say Game Boy. I could be wrong. It, it looks be, like a PC. Could be game GameCube cover. I've never played it. Neither have I. WWF Raw. Now I own this game currently. <sighs> I got it for five dollars at like a. Oh, Micah, you paid too much for that game. <laughs> WWF Raw is also very bad. <laughs> yeah, I put it in F tier. I put it above like the WrestleMania arcade game because you can move around. Yes. Like it's like it's functionable. Yeah. Uh now I've never played any of the game GameCube games because I mm. so that's where that's where Neither I'm have lost. I. Uh alright. So I'll just put those. Sadly, because I heard Day of Reckoning is pretty good. Pretty sure in WrestleMania yeah. 19 is. Um, oh man, I do know. I see it? Uh, uh, do I see some bad games that we still haven't gotten to? Yeah, I haven't played. This is like an arcade one. I've never played it. I'm gonna say this. This one. Have you played WrestleMania 18? Not on the Game Boy Advance. Or on the GameCube. I've I have not played any of the WrestleMania 18s. It, it's. Somehow a little better than WWF Raw. That's funny. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth is a good game. It's yeah. It's very much a prequel to Here Comes the Pain. Yeah. Uh, it, we're putting that above. I'm putting. I would put it in either low A tier or high B tier. It's it's like they they're starting to figure out what to do in a wrestling game yeah now wwf raw 2 now this is the reason that like this is a game i had when i was a child and then it got the disc got broken and so i bought it as an adult it's a bad game it's yeah i mean it's a lot better than raw <laughs> have you played it yeah i've played both of the rods raw 2 is a lot better yeah but like it's Again, though, that's not saying much. Like, the career mode sucks. Like, because you have yeah. to go through every single match to get to yours. Yeah. It's better than just bring it in. I, I don't feel comfortable putting it into the D tier. It's... At least put it at the top of F tier, but I think it's better than just bring it. Okay. Remember, one of these games you can play as Fred Durst, and the other one is a better game. Here comes the pain. We're putting this like straight to the top. Yes. This is the game that got me into wrestling. Mm. Here comes the pain. As a kid, I either had Here Comes the Pain or Shut Your Mouth. I can't remember which one. We had Here Comes the Pain. And I used to wake up insanely early as a kid. Like, I know what, for some people, I wake up insanely early now. But I would wake up at, like, if I woke up at 4.45, I was like, oh, I woke up right on time. And I would come down to the basement and turn on the PS2 and play Here Comes the Pain. Uh, I'm pretty sure I have owned all of the games, except for, like, the Game Boy 1 and not past here. Like, yeah. I'm pretty sure I have owned the rest of these. I have I have also played the rest of these except for the Game Boy ones and stuff. Uh, SmackDown vs. Raw, the original one. I would say so, this is the most C tier game possible. Yeah, this is the most middle of the road video game I've ever played. I think people give it a bad rap because it's between two very good games. Yes, but it's still good. Like the story mode is cool. Like double champion career at the end of the career. Season. Yeah. WrestleMania 21. It's alright. Have you played it? Yeah, it's alright. I would say top of the top of Raw Underground. Yeah. Um, because that's like an Xbox exclusive. Hmm. Uh, Spencer vs. Raw 2006. You already know that this is my favorite WWE game. I'm saying of top all of, of them. I'm saying. I'm just saying. Because the P PSP version exists, it has to go in A tier because the PSP version sucks. I I'm I'm going to say, and I know you're gonna disagree, and a lot of people are gonna disagree, but I think two thousand six is the best SmackDown versus Raw game. Oh, I, I disagree, but I know. 
and we're going to get to it and to the game that most people think is in, in a little bit. Mm-hmm. But I'd but, say it's high A tier because the PSV version really brings down like the console version. Okay. I I mean I've played both and I don't see much of a difference between the two. It's I th- it's mostly the fact that like there's like the PSP exclusive but it's like the <laughs> junkyard dog. Oh, uh, it's it's Jake the Snake Roberts is the is the version exclusive. Yeah, but the, the, that's kind. Of, I don't know. It's Jake the Snake Roberts. Also, the PSP version has poker. Yeah, I never liked the <laughs> mini games. Um, I'm gonna say that you've never played the WrestleMania Challenge, and let me just tell you, that's like a very D tier. Yeah. Uh, SmackDown vs. Raw 2007, one that I've had for multiple systems. I'll let you talk about this one. This one just straight up is weird. Like yeah, this one is just weird. Like there's, like it's, it's not a bad game. It's not the best, but it's also not in the middle. Like it's just I, weird. This 2007 is a good game. I'll give it that. Mm-hmm. It's. I'm surprised a lot of people think it's the best SmackDown versus Raw. People think this one is. Yeah. Uh, I'm n- just not a big fan personally. I would say that this is a B tier, but like the bottom of B. Yeah. Now I feel like we're about to have a very heated discussion because yeah. I don't like this game. Because this is my favorite de- SmackDown vs. Raw game. And I don't like this game. This game? I have tried to play this game on so many occasions and I just don't like it. You don't like it because it ruined GM mode. I don't like it for a lot of reasons. This game was like one of the first PS2 games I ever had. This game is this game is amazing. Personal assets aside, the story mode is amazing. They bring in ECW. They like kind of bring back unlockables, which I like. I like that you kind of have to like work to like get Shane McMahon, uh, Mr. McMahon. Mr. McMahon, but bald. Yeah. I mean, if you have to put in a lot of work and then the result is Shane McMahon, was the work worth it? But 2008 Shane McMahon. <laughs> so it was like 2001 Shane McMahon. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't think it's the best game. It's just my favorite. I I don't like it. I, I, I can see why people like it. I, would I say mean, if, if there was any reason why I would like it, it's the sad man's in it. And I have recently become a slightly b- bigger of a fan of the sad man's, like, in-ring stuff. I say this is the best B- B-tier game. I can agree with you on that one. I know it's not a good game. It's just my favorite, personally. Yeah. SmackDown vs. <laughs> Raw 2009. Now, Holy I have- shit, is this a bad game? <laughs> now... I played this on the DS, and I was like, this is a bad game. Maybe it's just because it's for the DS. Nope. No, it's just a bad game. Bottom of D, D, or would you say that it is Global Force Wrestling? I would say it's Global Force Wrestling tier. I went to a friend's house, and we played this, and after one match, I was like, do you have anything else we can play? I, th- I say it's I was like, I was like, I'll even play Just Bring It at this point. No, it's better than Raw 2. Maybe I was giving Raw 2 too much credit. Like, this was just a bad game. I, re- I really think you're giving Raw 2 too much credit. Yeah, but, like, at the same... Like, here's the thing, is that there's a split in the F tier between, yeah. like, playable games and just completely unplayable. Like the fu- Like, the function of playing a game does not exist. Right. Legends of WrestleMania. Now, oh. I like this game. It's all right. I think this is, again, an amazingly average game. Yeah, I think this is... It takes up the same brain space for me as SmackDown vs. Raw. Now, SmackDown vs. Raw 2010. I like this game. I like this game, too. I think it's the best the best C tier. <laughs> SmackDown vs. Raw 2011... I hate this game. I love this game. What? 
Have you played the, the Road to WrestleMania in this game? I hate this game, dude. It's so stupid. I the, love it. This is the one where, like, Dolph Ziggler versus Druids, right? It, yeah, that's the one where you have to fight freaking Druids. No, this game is trash, Derek. Please. This game... No, no, no. Hold on. I do want... This game brought in universe mode. And when it was this game, I loved universe mode. I never played any storylines, but I literally just would randomize universe mode until like primo was wwe champion <laughs> please let me put this in like d tier this is a can bad I, game can it at least be like bottom c tier yeah i mean i put it there all stars i know what you're gonna say i don't like this game again i love this game if you love this game this then you should buy 2K Battlegrounds, because this is the same game as 2K Battlegrounds. You act like I have money. <laughs> uh, Here's I, the thing about this game. Mm -hmm. I played this game when I was 12, because that's around the time it came out. This is the exact game that spoke to 12-year-old me. <laughs> right, but like, this game is bad. I don't think so. It's I just would, fun. I would say this is like... This this deserves to be, like, right between these two games. Yeah, sure. It's fun. It's, like, it's not supposed to be a main main series game. It's a pick-up-and-play, you now, know? Now I know what you're going to say about this game. 12. Should I just put it in Mania 19 because it's not the best game? And you know it? It's... You can, you can put it at top of No Mercy 2016 tier. I don't think it's as good as Mania 2000, but I I like it. I like the story mode. He, here's my thing. Yeah, I was going to say, it's unfortunate that it was followed up by that piece of art. Yeah. Paul Heyman wrote the story mode to this, and, like, this is just a good game. Yeah. This was, because it was attitude mode. Yeah. That was the game with attitude mode. 2K14? I'm just going to put this here. Do you want me to just put all of these here? Because I don't think yeah. I've played all any. So Actually, I have, play I have played Survivor Series. It's yeah. it's just worse. Alright, let's worse. rank the same game seven times. That, hey. <laughs> <laughs> That's not fair, because this, in my That's opinion... That's a good game. That is a good game. Right? Really? Really? Above 13. Dude, 30 years of WrestleMania... That's fair. Actually, you know what? I will let you put it all in tier because the Undertaker beat the streak mode is so good. Yeah. All right. I think we're in agreement. <sighs> that like that's just can we can we put it and never play tier even though we've both extensively played this game? Actually, hold on. <laughs> for, for serious. Because see, because of the showcase mode, because the showcase mode is this like the saving grace of this. Yeah, it's not a great game. Yeah, but I would say that this is barely better. That is really when all of the two K games started being the same game. Um, I would say that there, and then get ready for this, huh? Yeah. Get ready for this, though. I like 2K19. Yeah, I was going to put it above Know Your Role. And yeah, then... that's fair. Oh, oh boy. boy oh, boy, is this game I, hot did fucking I just garbage. Talk about... That needs to go on the bottom. That is literally unplayable. No, because I have played it. Derek, you've never played this game. This game sucks so hard. I have, I have attempted to play 2K20, and it has never worked. <laughs> If I don't have the internet on, there are no glitches. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Because I it, it's I don't have a disc. I have the digital thing, so like they it, they've updated it enough now that it works. I have this on my gaming laptop and it crashes every time I try to save a created title. Can we at least put 06 and all in tier? I think it does. I think it deserves it at least. But I don't put. I don't equate all in. It. <sighs> but it's okay that you're. Uh, I'm not saying that because it's my favorite game. I'm saying that because it's a really good game. Yeah, but like 
So is 13. And I wouldn't say that 13 is one of the best games. Right. But I would say SmackDown vs. Raw is 2006. Not not the original. Then I'd like to move this this into that. That's I'm totally fine with that. I love that game. Boom. I like that. I like I like that look. I like that tier list. And this is the definitive version. Yep. No. If anyone else makes a tier list, it's wrong because we made this one. Yeah. All right. And now we're. It's going to be the two of us again. No shared screen. Now. Well, thanks for watching this episode of the, of the Devoid, Devoid Wrestling, Wrestling Podcast. Podcast. Play the song again, Derek. I want to hear it. Goodbye. I love you. I didn't do that last time. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>